Hey guys, Jen with Astro T. So today we are taking a little break for the next couple videos and we are getting away from all the craziness of what's going on in the world currently and looking at a different kind of craziness for Halloween season. And it is the astrology of a cult leader. So, um, Halloween season is for those taboos and those kind of creepy, weird, you know, unconventional things. So for something different, I thought we could talk a little bit about cults and to see if there are any signs in or signatures in the cult leaders uh, natal chart to show, you know, how they were able to gain such a following and to just, you know, elevate to the level that they went to. So today we are going to first talk about David Koresh. So um, he was the leader of the Branch Davidian cult. Um, they really got to their peak, well, their peak, ending too in the uh, 90s and uh, when they were killed they got into firefight with ATF and the FBI back in the early 90s and that's when a lot of them were killed along with the leader David Koresh. So if you guys want to pull all this up and see his chart um so you want to go to astro.com and you can dial in. He was born August 17th, 1959, 8.49 a.m. in Houston, Texas. Um, so you can follow along. And um, so it's a lot of fun to really do some digging to really see. And this one stood out to me a lot. Um, so first thing that stand stood out to me was that he was born under a full moon. Um, so his moon was in Aquarius and his sun was in Leo and that is in the fifth and 11th house axis, a moon in the fifth and sun in the 11th. So the sun is your drive. Um, it's the here and now, it's your ego. It's, um, you know, you, what your the, the meaning of life and your destiny in life, in this life. The moon is your disposition, your attitude, uh, what makes you feel good and your, you know, your mood and your, um, uh, your memories also, and kind of what from the past is making you into the person that you are today. Um, so those born under a full moon, they can have a meaningful life, uh, destined for greatness, some of them. And we see that a lot in um, the charts of actually our two uh, main um, uh, candidates here in this um, election period, and uh, they are born under full moons. So, um, so there people are, could be destined for greatness. Someone that is going to maybe stand out in the spotlight, but can also be filled with kind of an inner turmoil. Um, and they could lead somewhat unstable lives. Um, so now his son, David Koresh is in the 11th house, which, you know, and it's in Leo. So Leo shows that leadership quality, um, like the lion leading the pack, um, leading his pride, um, his followers look at him and this is the 11th house, you know, we think the, the followers, they look at him like he is the sun. They gravitate to him. Um, they revolve around him pretty much. Um, but the 11th house is, uh, like acquaintances, friends, followers. Uh, and he certainly became the center of their solar system. He was their alpha and their omega. They did anything that he wanted. Um, and he pretty much had that control over them. Um, the moon in Aquarius can signify that he was a true visionary. Um, they want to change society. They want to create a new and better world. And you could see that in um, how he was. If you, uh, um, There actually is a pretty good uh, movie out. And I think it's Netflix about him and about everything that went down. Really interesting to really dive deep and learn some more. Um, he was huge back in the 90s. And this was when I was um, a lot younger, just getting out of, um, you know, college, just getting married uh, and getting ready to have kids, actually. Um, so when this story came out, it was huge, you know, and, and everyone was obsessed with it. I actually have the Time Magazine of it. I wish I pulled it out so I could show you guys for this video. Anyway, so... Um, he then is a Libra rising and or rising or ascendant. So, which is, um, also houses his, 
his north node uh, all in his fifth or his first house. So a Libra ascendant is extremely charming. They're charismatic. They're magnetic. They really make those around them feel special and important. They have that way to just, um, they have that gift that in social situations, they can make others feel like they've been heard. Um, the North Node in the first can represent finding oneself and standing out as an individual, um, kind of, you know, it's pulling away from that seventh house where you're more as a couple or more um, as a duo. And this pulls you into kind of where you are, you know, kind of by yourself, you're elevated, um, kind of rising above the crowd, kind of, you know, being that above and that's the Leo that, you know, that leader of the pride. Um, the charisma, the charisma with him, you can really see it because he charmed Lois Rodden and Lois Rodden, she was the original kind of, um, head of the, uh, the original leader of these Branch Davidians, uh, this group, uh, and a it just because he kind of wooed her and they had, he got her to have an affair with him. And I think they, I think they had a child. I can't remember. Um, but she allowed him to really ascend to that chosen one type status that that's that, you know, first North node in the first house. Um, he also has cancer in his 10th house with the MC on the first degree. So, his image is one because cancer, that's his image and what his reputation was one amongst his followers was one of compassion, that nurturing soul, a loving and devoted to God and devoted to his followers, um, intuitive and in tune to their needs. And so that cancer vibe that really just made him easily um, trustworthy and and feeling like, oh, this person really cares about me. Um, Jupiter then is in his second house and that is in the sign of Scorpio. So his deep desire to hold on to what is his um, and build it as big as he could. And this was once he ascended to being the leader, he wanted it to be bigger, better, um, you know, and really just hold on to his followers and have them, you know, just worship him. Jupiter brings out that religious nuance. Um, and Jupiter is square to his son and his Uranus in the 11th house, which, um, you know, it's, it, 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 he feels like those are his followers. They're his, you know, that, that he has like almost a, um, ownership over them. Um, like they, they belong to him. They're his followers. So he has that kind of Christ-like, um, mentality with that Jupiter square to his son um and the Uranus in there um the placements like these uh like this Jupiter sun square uh they can really show an inflated ego as well like you know just uh, uh, I'm bigger and better and more knowledgeable than any everyone um you can have a lot of opportunities for success with this but with the potential of going too far because Jupiter always has that, especially when it's a square, it always has that potential to just do a little too much, go a little bit too far. Um, too much of that sun in Leo in the 11th house, he wanted to be worshiped. He wanted everyone to himself to follow him and to serve him um, in whatever way he kind of directed them to. Um, moving on in that matter, he had Mars and Venus conjunct in his 12th house in Virgo. So he wanted to have also full sexual control over his followers, um, and his group, whatever. And he, you know, kept them all hidden away. He actually, um, they, he broke up marriages because he thought that he should be with the person that, you know, they were with. Um, he even was with, um, you know, younger people. So this, this combination can be a really high sex drive, um, wanting all women for himself, uh, no matter if they're in a relationship or if they're under age, um, that's what he wanted. So that's what he went after. And he felt, you know, with that, um, you know, that Jupiter square to his, um, 
to his son in Leo in the 11th house, he felt like I deserve this. This is what I meant to be, you know, with my charisma, my um, ascendant in Libra, that charisma can really convince people to go along with the things that I say or the things that he said. Um, so, you know, and, and he kept them hidden away. If you think about it all, everyone was kind of hidden away in that compound. So that's that 12th house also. So he kept all his women, his children, all and all his followers like hidden. So he was kind of, you know, kept away from society so that he could nourish this, this cult pretty much. Um, you know, he, the, the, and the Virgo gave him, being that it was in Virgo, gave him the ability to really convince others the way it should be. That's that, you know, that convincing that, that mercurial energy, um, in there with that, that, Mars and Venus, like, this is what you need. This is what I'm going to give you. And this is how we're going to go about doing it and how we're going to get, you know, elevated to that next life. Um, Jupiter is square Uranus, um, again, in the 11th house. And that can show restlessness and always wanting more and more. Um, and we could see that with the, he uh, acquired hordes of uh, guns and ammunition and, you um, you know, just wanted more. He wanted more control over his people. He wanted, um, you know, his, his religious beliefs were very unconventional. That's that, you know, Jupiter square to Uranus. This is like religion and unconvention and his unconventional religious views and his rebelliousness. But this rebelliousness is a, what can cause harm and what ultimately did cause harm to him and his followers also. Um, because on the day he died, if you look at the transits, the day he died, um, shoot, I don't have it written down. It was in 93. Um, easy to look up on Wikipedia or whatever. Um, so on the day he died, Jupiter retrograde was retrograding and was about to conjunct his North Node, almost signifying that, you know, everything he worked for might be coming back you know, kind of to bite him in the ass. <laughs> yeah, that's how it ended up. That isn't necessarily a bad thing. But when you look at it in the aspect of um, what was going on at the time, it kind of makes a lot of sense. Uh, the moon was in its balsamic phase. So only two days prior. So on the day he died, remember he was born on a full moon. And now two days prior to his death, the moon, um, or two days after his death, it was going to be a new moon in the sign of Aries. Um, so born a full moon, dies on a new moon, pretty much. Uh, the, and new moons are what? They're completions. That balsamic phase that he was in two days before that new moon was kind of that completion phase. Um, so the new moon was, it, the, was going to be in Aries in his seventh house. Um, or the moon was in Aries in his seventh house. It wasn't going to be a new moon until it hit the eighth house. Um, and the seventh house represents your enemies. And Aries is, you know, putting in that fight. So his enemies were obviously, you know, people trying to stop him from acquiring all these guns and ammo and doing the things that he was doing. And the talk about that he was, um, you know, doing things with, children under age that was not appropriate. So the uh, alcohol, tobacco, firearms, and the FBI were raiding his compound. So, which is in the end, what ended up killing him. Um, this was also square to Mars that was transiting his 10th house at the time. So his reputation and his undoing was causing, you know, was causing his undoing and the enemies and the fight. Uh, transiting Uranus was conjunct Neptune in his fourth. So the, they're both transiting and they both conjuncted his fourth house, which also can signify death. Fourth house can signify death to an extent because it is um, the lowest part of the chart. Um, so, you know, Neptune and Uranus, that's sudden unexpected, shocking kind of uh, going up in smoke. So it's just in, in his home, that's in the fourth house. So his home, a sudden shocking thing, these, you know, and, and the fire started and going up in smoke. So it's just really spelled out that that 
exact conjunction was in his fourth house pretty much on the day he died. Um, so anyway, I found this a very compelling chart. I could go so much deeper and look at his zodiacal releasing, look at, you know, different things as how he, you know, came up, but that would make this video take hours. So he is the first in this series. We're going to try and look into doing a couple more um, during this season. I think it'll be a lot of fun, get our minds off of all the seriousness that's going on in the world right now and kind of, you know, lighten things up a bit or if as much as a cult leader can lighten things up anyway. So I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And as always, make sure you hit that subscribe button and uh, get notified. Hit that notification bell because we have some fun coming up as well. Lots of things on the horizon. Maybe we'll do a couple more cult leaders and who knows what else. Like always add in the comments what you'd like to see and what you'd like to talk about. And um, again, uh, yeah, like, subscribe, and get notified. So I will see y'all soon. Bye.